For the past few years, I've been taking a supplement to help me go to sleep called glycine. And in the last 90 days, I wanted to see what would happen to my body if I doubled or even tripled my dose. The results? Not what I expected. So in this video, I want to share what glycine is, what are the benefits of taking it, what are the possible side effects, who should be taking it, who should not be taking it, and also I'm going to get into my experience max dosing glycine. And if you know what glycine is already, you can skip all the way down to my experience, but you may be wondering at this point, what the f*** is glycine? Glycine is a non-essential amino acid. Despite its tiny size, glycine pulls big weight. It helps build proteins, create critical compounds like glutathione and creatine, and keeps your cells humming. So what does glycine actually do? Oh, you know, just a few casual things. Like one, being a neurotransmitter. It basically chills out your nervous system by toning down the noise in certain parts of your brain. This means better sleep, less stress, and a little bit more zen monk vibes. It helps you move. Glycine is involved in motor control, so it's a backstage pass to smoother muscle function. It also builds collagen. Your skin, your joints, and connective tissue, that's all heavily reliant on glycine. Basically, it's the construction crew for your youthful glow. So what are the possible benefits of taking glycine? Number one, it's anti-inflammatory. Glycine reduces inflammation by dialing down the drama in your immune system. It's perfect for anyone who is tired of being bloated, achy, or vaguely irritable 24 seven. Number two, brain and muscle gains. It helps make creatine, which I talked about in this video over here, which is like jet fuel for both your brain and your biceps. It improves both mental clarity and muscle recovery. Number three, it's the blood sugar whisperer. So studies suggest that glycine can improve insulin sensitivity. If your pancreas had a therapist, maybe it would prescribe some glycine. Number four, it's good for the heart. It's been linked to lower blood pressure and reduced risk of heart attacks. Number five is being a liver bodyguard. So glycine helps shield your liver from damage, especially after one too many networking events involving cocktails. And the final one is sleeping like a baby, but without the diapers. Taken before bed, glycine can help you fall asleep faster and get deeper and more restorative sleep. And this is actually something that I tested myself and the results have been a little bit crazy. But it's not all good, so here are some side effects that one may get when taking glycine. This is basically the fine print. For the most part, glycine is super chill when it comes to supplements, and most people can handle up to six grams without a lot of drama. At worst, you might get some mild stomach grumbling, some nausea, or even soft stools, especially if you take it on an empty stomach or go way overboard. Even when taking mega doses, think like 30 grams and above, have not raised red flags in studies, including with folks managing schizophrenia and other mental health conditions. That said, it may push you too far and you might run into GI issues or the occasional twitchy tremor if you take way too much. So yeah, don't treat it like popping M&Ms, okay? So who should think about supplementing with glycine? People who should consider using glycine are athletes and weakened warriors, specifically for the faster recovery and muscle support. If you deal with any insulin resistance, glycine may help you tame those blood sugar roller coasters. If you are dealing with heart issues, glycine may be able to lower your blood pressure, putting less stress on your ticker. And if you are a sleep deprived zombie for more deeper restful sleep, you may want to be taking glycine. Who should should not be taking glycine. If you fall into any one of these categories, pump your brakes and do talk to your doctor. Pregnant or breastfeeding women, because there's not enough data yet, so let's not even beta test this one. People using the medication clozapine, glycine has been shown to mess with how this medication works. For people with liver conditions or on certain meds like cyclosporine or warfarin, interactions can get a little bit messy. So let's get on to my 90 day glycine experiment. So over the past 90 days, I've been flirting with glycine super hard. It's not really like the polite textbook six grams that most people take. I've been going pretty full throttle with like 10 to 15 grams a night. And I gotta tell you, it's been a game changer. So the first thing I noticed is that it has been a cheat code for better sleep. When it comes to my sleep quality, my deep sleep and my REM sleep have gotten extended. And basically these are like the VIP lounges for slumber. Now with that being said, I was tracking everything using an aura ring and the data didn't lie on that end either. One of the things that I realized when taking glycine was that my time to REM sleep was way faster. And something you may not know is that the time it takes for you to get to REM sleep is an important biomarker for quality of sleep because it reflects how efficiently the body transitions through the sleep stages. A shorter time to REM sleep can indicate better sleep continuity and efficiency 
while delays may suggest sleep disruptions or disorders. And the last thing about having an efficient entry to REM sleep is that it has been linked to how refreshed and alert you can feel when waking. So the effect it had on my sleep was like skipping the trailers and jumping straight into the main feature, popcorn optional. Next up, recovery. Something that I noticed when doing this experiment was my recovery was slightly enhanced. Comparing glycine with my ongoing creatine experiment had me feeling like I hijacked my 20 something recovery speed and brought it to my 40s. If you're watching this and you cross the big 4-0, you know what I mean. Soreness hangs around like an awkward party guest and it just becomes slower to bounce back from one workout to another. But when max dosing glycine, that lag vanished. Doing this had me feeling like I was recovering in my 20s and 30s. The muscle soreness that used to linger like a bad group text, it was gone. I was back to training hard and sleeping hard and waking up like my joints hadn't signed a complaint form overnight. Essentially, I was recovering like the younger, smugger version of myself and I wasn't mad about it at all. Something I did notice is that I felt like I could do one more workout per week as opposed to the normal three workouts that I usually do. And something you have to know is that glycine is not just some feel good amino acid, it's the unsung hero of recovery. It kicks off protein synthesis and ramps up growth hormone secretion, basically throwing your muscle fibers a rebuild me baby party after every single workout. And this is crucial if you wanna bounce back stronger instead of just limping less. This means less oxidative stress, less inflammation, and fewer mornings where you don't feel like you've been hit by a semi truck. And my final surprise in my glycine saga, my skin. I wasn't aiming for a glow up because I think I look pretty good already. But somewhere around week four, I noticed the mirror being slightly kinder. Fewer wrinkles, more brightness, a bit more Paul Rudd at 50 than that guy from Cocoon. And here's why. Glycine plays a starring role in collagen synthesis, the stuff that keeps your skin from folding up like a crumpled napkin. It helps maintain elasticity and firmness, making your face look less like a topographic map and more like your younger self. And because glycine is also a backstage player in glutathione production, it helps fend off the free radicals, which are like the little party crashers that are responsible for dullness, dryness, and early aging. Add in the fact that you can improve hydration and even better skin barrier function, and suddenly your face is looking fantastic. Now, with all that being said, glycine has been fantastic. I've had great experiences by mega dosing it, but here's the thing about supplements that you need to know. What we want to do with supplements is that we want to be testing them one by one to see their effect on our bodies. And I'm not doing this video to tell you to go max dose this or max dose that. That's not the point. But the point of this is that we are all our own science experiments. And we should be experimenting on ourselves to see what effect these things have, whether it be the things that we do in the weight room or the supplements that we put into our bodies. Now, I don't want you to take my word for it and start max dosing glycine as if your life depended on it, but I do want you to start treating yourself as an N equals one. If you've gone this far, you're probably wondering what happened during the time that I maxed those creatine. If you are interested in that, you can check out this video over here. I'll see you there.